One, two, three, four. <clears throat> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Dynamite Gets My Podcast. The Dynamite Gets My Podcast, episode 76. We're at 76, people. Can you believe it? I say that every episode, I think, but I can't believe it because we're still in the beginning. 76 is not a milestone, okay? Nobody celebrates the number 76. What people do celebrate, though, is the number 50 and the number 100. And then 150, then 200, and so on. Uh, I, <laughs> I can't, like, I'm going to be really comfortable and satisfied once this podcast hits 400 episodes. 400! And you can deny, you can say, oh, I don't know if that's going to happen. And I, I'll even say that myself. But, uh, as of right now, I'm motivated to keep this thing going. This is the longest thing I've ever committed to. I've been doing this podcast since 2016, I believe. And it's 2019, and I'm still doing it. Usually I have ideas that are too complicated, too much... Um, work needs to be put in place to get it done on a regular schedule basis. And so what ends up happening is, uh, like either school at the time or work gets in the way of trying to get that stuff done. Cause here's what happens. You might say, oh, you do the work, but then, you know, on your days off or after work, just do, just do the YouTube stuff. And you know, Unless you're a really dedicated and uh, ambitious person, you know, it's hard to just, you know, you get off of work, you get off of school, you really don't feel like doing more work, even though it's it can be simple and fun. Just, there's just days where you don't want to. And then it kind of turns into, um, it turns into a habit of, not doing stuff. We all know what that's like. And again, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I am only 24, soon to be 25. Um, I don't know shit. I know what I know now, and I know, I know the, I know what I have from, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I just, I have, although I have uh, some knowledge on things, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not comfortable in life. And I won't be until, like my brain's not even fully developed yet. But what I'm trying to say is I won't be really comfortable until like mid-30s. And I'm not saying that because... Because I feel like that's a specific thing towards me. I'm saying that because you ask anybody who's at least 40 years old. They will tell you they didn't know shit and they weren't shit throughout their entire 20s. It's just everyone will say that. Like, yeah, you may have accomplished stuff. Yeah, you went to school and whatnot. But you, you don't know. You don't know. You don't know life. You don't know life. You don't, and you definitely don't know life in high in high school. So if you think, well, there's the odd, there's the odd few that actually do. Those are the ones that have like a rough childhood, and they gotta grow up by themselves pretty much. They're raising their brothers and sisters. You know, people who grow up in those type of situations, they have a, a head start to, to this, this whole thing, this game called life. 
and you know you could say I envy them but you know there's n there's always a negative side to what seems positive there is there always is that's something I know it doesn't matter what you're trying to do or or where you're trying to get to uh, it's never a good idea to look at someone else's life and compare it to yours and say damn I wish I had that life or you'll say things like if I had the money this guy had I would be so happy but no doesn't matter who you are what you do what's going on how much money you have there's still there's something there will always be something negative uh, interfering with your life it doesn't matter who you are and so but I'm not saying um, here's what I will say some people have you can see other people have better lives than other people and yes their problems may be minuscule compared to other people who have terrible issues in their life lots of uh, maybe health problems no money poor which is the same thing um, uh, you know stuff like that and they look at someone who's rich and you know is like a CEO of a company and they say, yeah, he, he, he's got, his problems are nothing compared to mine. You know, there's a constant battle of who has the, who has it worse. But it's all relative. You know, if that poor person somehow came into contact with a bunch of money and became a CEO of a company, they're going to realize it's a different struggle. They are going to say, hey, I'm glad I'm not poor anymore, and I'm glad I'm not struggling to find food and warmth for my children every day. But what they will realize is, you know, there's these other stressors in life, some major stressors. They probably would stress more than they did when they were poor because they didn't, they only had a specific amount of things to worry about when they're poor you know and they're always with their family and there's that you know friendship and kind connection they have because you know we're all in this together type thing um, there's there's a real community feeling aspect to uh, being in 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 a in a, in a harsh environment. I'll give you an example. Like in, in right when the Great Depression was going on, uh, people had to, you know, like burn money to stay warm, steal food, shit like that. And what some people have said and documented, documented uh, survivors of the Great Depression have said they almost miss that era of time because the community was so uh, together there was a togetherness to the community everyone everyone was happy in 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 a way that like obviously they weren't happy because of the great depression but they they felt as though um although they had nothing to survive and live with they they had each other and they were able to there was no you know there was no like fighting there was no arguing over little things over or, or over you know minuscule things they would the only things they were concerned about is the basic human necessities and because of that they were able to focus more on helping their neighbor out or their neighbor helping them out and because you help them out they'll help you out and so on and so forth there's a whole aspect of 
of uh, of the togetherness. So once the economy started to come back up and everything started to go back to normal, it was like, damn, I kind of I kind of miss the Great Depression, you know. And I'm sure you could think of examples of this in your life. Um, maybe you had a flood in your house and your family had to evacuate and live in a hotel for like a few weeks. And while that's happening, there's, you're all scared of what's, of what's happening to you, but you're all together and you're communicating and you're working, you're working things out. And just, and just, just having that. Is enough for humans that's really all we need we just need each other we need good friendships good family but we don't we don't have that really anymore I mean yeah you could say we have it but there's so many things distracting us and getting in the way that we've really stepped away from what is really needed to keep your uh, mental state in a healthy spot. Um, So yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm trying to say. You've been there. We've all been there. And I, I, I agree, you know. If I was in the Great Depression, I would... I would long for the nostalgia, the good times, the good times and the bad times, and I do that to this day. And I'm sure when I'm 40 years old, I'm going to look back to when I, to this moment right now, and I'm going to say, yes, I had no money, yes, I was struggling to, to just do what I wanted to do, I was in a shit job that I hated. But there's something about those times that really makes you miss it. You're always, you're always, you know, it's the simpler, it's the simpler times you want to go back to. And this is, I'm living in this simple time right now. There's not a lot in my life that's too complicated, but... Because I'm living in the in this moment right now, I don't realize this, and um, because I have no idea what the future is going to hold, maybe the future will be even worse than what I'm at now. But I doubt it. I can't. You know, that's not going to happen. So it's like either way, whether your future is shit or better than what it is now, you will still look back to these moments, and have those fond memories because the the fond memories will stick around you don't want to you don't want to keep the bad memories you you block them out you block them out right away everyone does and so yeah let's have some cbd This is like the last little bit here. I should get some more. Alexa! Put CBD on the list! Did you hear that? Oh, I can't even get it. Maybe I should just... Ink it. You gotta put on your tongue. Under your tongue. So that it can get right into your bloodstream. You want that right in the blood. The blood of the beast. The blood of the beast. Ooh. Ooh, baby, I love you way. Every day. Zabu <laughs> Jay. Look, everyone, we got a list. We have a list. 
on the second blue card out of the big stack here. Oops, I'm bending the shit out of them. See the stack? Ah! Crack. Cracker Jack. Oh, baby, it's going to feel so good to get this one completed as well. I still find it hard to believe that, like, I got... Oops. Whoops, look what I did. I fucking moved the camera, you cunt. Move that shit. Fix that shit. Oh. That's all it moved a little bit. But look at this. These are... This is every podcast I've done. Maybe there's a few in here that I didn't do, but... Wow. Wow. This was episode one right here. I didn't even write episode one at the top. Wow. So fascinating. So fascinating. Um, I think I mentioned that I was going to put that shitty album I have on... Spotify, and you know, all iTunes and all the other shit, which I, you know, I did, I went through the process of what needs to be done to, to do that, and I guess I kind of fucked up a bit, I didn't, now, you're gonna think that I, I plagiarized, but I didn't, okay? All the songs I created were used using the, um, the the already preset sounds that you get with Logic. So all that shit's royalty free. You can do what you want with it. But I also used royalty free stuff from the internet um, for certain sound effects and whatnot. And so I guess I didn't... Uh, I didn't properly communicate to the company, you know, where I got these uh, specific sounds and effects from. So they uh, they deemed it as, you know, not original content, and they blocked it, preventing me from uploading the shit to. Uh, Spotify and I don't know that other stuff. And you know what? At first I was like, "What? That's bullshit." But then I was like, "Well, I can understand why." Um and at this point I don't really care. Because you know, I should have done it properly from the beginning. Uh, and there's that, and also it's it's the first album I ever produced and you know created. Like it's not, it was it is special to me to have and to put out there, but it's not like it's not like something that was a passion pro. Well, it was a passion project, but it wasn't like it was <laughs> it wasn't it didn't mean as much to me as like this podcast means or the book that I'm writing because if this podcast were to get blocked then I would have an issue then I would be freaking out um so yeah but I can't I can't really see this podcast being blocked other than the stupid shitty rules that YouTube has like um you know like the they demonetize you for for just saying just saying a word even if you're quoting someone who said something that was controversial you risk getting your video demonetized like for instance if someone said the n-word and they were being racist towards someone used it in a derogatory way not just you know goofing around and if you decide to talk about them and you relay what they said, you know, just because and you and you don't agree with what they said, even if you don't agree, you're just relaying what they said. So you get the message across of what actually happened. Even if you do that, 
you still risk getting demonetized just because of the shit algorithm or whatever is put into place in YouTube. YouTube? Hey, YouTubes! Fuh. I might, I might show, I might show Ronald Jenkins. Let me write that down. Ronald Jenkins, Ronald, Ron, or or can I? I don't think I would get demonetized if I show Ronald Jenkins music on here, would I? He's he's you know he's he's somewhat popular, but it's not like, well I don't know maybe I can't. I shouldn't risk it. I'll just say, go check Ronald Jenkins out. He is, he's a damn good music producer. And he's been on, he's been on YouTube for quite some time. He's like, uh, he's definitely an OG creator. And he, for a, a long time, he stopped uploading. And just recently, he started up again. Mm, mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. So I've been, I've been going for walks a lot lately. I'm trying to set my mind at ease with different things. I'm doing yoga as well. Um, and I'm slowly dipping into meditation, which I have done all this before, but I never stuck to it. But, but I've been walking every day for a while now. And I'm starting to get used to it. I'm starting to get comfortable with it. And I'm starting to like it. And having Oliver to come for the walks helps tremendously. It just... Like, I don't even want to go for a walk unless I have Oliver there. It just doesn't feel right. It doesn't, it's, not, it's not the same. Uh... And while I'm walking, I listen to podcasts or audiobooks, which I only have. I only have one audiobook, and I, I finished it already, so I gotta buy some more. And I, I bought Graham Hancock's book, his newest one, um, something something America's. I can't remember, you know. Uh, but I bought it. I bought the Kindle version, so I have to actually physically read it, and I regret doing that. I should have bought the audio version, because I listen to more material than than I do reading. Because you can't you can't go for a walk and read at the same time. You can't you can't do the dishes and read at the same time. Like it's so. It's so, it's so much more, um, it's so much more, what's the word, convenient to be able to just listen to the book while you're doing something else. Humans can't multitask, but they can in this way. And I find I have trouble concentrating, but if I'm, if I'm doing something, like let's say the dishes or I'm walking... I find it easier to focus on what's being said to me. But if I'm just sitting in a classroom and the teacher's just rambling on about a subject, pretty well instantaneously my mind will go away and I'll start daydreaming. I daydream constantly. And I love it. I love it in the sense that the daydreams I have are, are so much fun. I love that aspect of the daydreaming. But what I don't like about it is the fact that it distracts me from what I'm supposed to be focusing on. And sometimes the only daydreams that will come to my head are just negative thoughts that I, um, I, uh, I dwell on. And I keep uh, expanding on the negative thoughts, turning it into something bigger than it will ever be. And all I imagine is, oh, this big snowball that I've rolled, you know, it started off as just one snowflake. And I took that snowflake and rolled it into a big fucking massive boulder size snowball. 
And then I look at that snowball and I say, that's what's going to happen. That boulder is going to fucking fall right on my head and crush me. But then when the actual outcome of the situation happens, I realize, oh, it's really only snowflake size. I'm the one who makes the situation worse than it is because I I always expect the worst possible outcome to happen. I've always said to myself, expect the worst, hope for the best. Now that's a good thing to do, but when it when it when it interferes with your thoughts in a negative way, eh, then maybe it's not so good. So I don't know. As I said, I'm going to therapy now. Um, my next session is still like a week away. Hopefully, I actually get to do it because of this stupid fucking job I'm in. It's it's not like the job I have is not like a set schedule. It's not Monday to Friday, I get weekends off. It's not, you know, there's no set schedule. Literally, I could get a text right now saying, oh, go, you got to go to work. Be there in 10 minutes. It's so, it's fucking, it just brutally attacks me. I hate it. And there's certain people in my life that I try to explain this to. Close people. I'm not going to say who. But anyway. But they, no matter how I explain it, they just think, they say, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You got to do what you got to do sometimes. Suck it up. Shit like that. And I hate, I fucking hate when people say that. If you say to me, suck it up move on, you know, something like that. I lose so much respect for you. I cannot stand when people say that to me. If you say that to me, I don't want anything to do with you. I don't. Like, I really hate that mentality of life. I fucking hate it. Because just because you don't understand how someone else feels does not mean. Just because you don't understand how someone feels and just because you think you figured your life out and things are going good for you, that you can just tell people to suck it up and, and, and be the way you are, like that's no, okay? Not everybody runs on the same program you're running on, okay? People do not get to choose the way these things happen. A lot of it stems from growing up in whatever childhood environment you were in. If you were in a shitty household with parents who didn't know what they were doing, didn't understand, they were just doing the basics, and fucking you up every other way. That stuff sticks with you. And you can't fucking control it. You can't. Until you figure out how to control it. Either through therapy or, you know, some sort of book. Or you, or you just live life and go through experiences over and over again uh, until you get to a point where you, you figure it out just through trial and error. But by doing it that way, it could take fucking 50 years before you get past those uh, traumatic events you had as a child. And then you got to think, well, fuck, I could have had this shit dealt with in my 20s. And my life would probably have been much better. So, what I like to think is, although so far my 20s have been nothing but misery, um, I gotta figure it out now. I gotta do, or at least, you know, 
start building the the foundation of what needs to be done to figure out this horrible mental illness specifically depression and anxiety and you can say i'm uh i'm i'm a complainer and i'm i'm uh I'm non-motivated and I'm weak and I'm not trying hard enough. But I don't care. Yes, everybody gets depression and anxiety. But for some, it's at an uncontrollable constant rate that um, it's not even a question of whether you have the motivation or the will or the or they know how to do it. It's just, even if you even if you wanted to to get out, sometimes you, you're so conditioned in this state that it almost feels comfortable, like like Stockholm syndrome. And it's uh, the thought of of even progressing forward out of the mental state is more scarier than just staying where you're at. And I know. That's not a good way to think, obviously. But I'm just saying that's the reality. You know, you can't just bitch at someone because they're, they have these scary thoughts and they don't want to leave their comfortable space. You got to help them. You got to guide them. You got to, you got to, you know, slowly, slowly push them in the right direction. Don't just fucking bark at them. And say you're stupid and you need to just pick yourself up and you know, blah, blah, blah. All right? It's not, we're realizing things. We're realizing things as we progress as a human society. And you know, you talk to your grandparents and they'll say, Well, when I was a fucking kid, my grand, my my father used to hit me, and he he just told me to suck it up and go fucking shovel the shit in the driveway to, to, to help my feelings and, and and, and these negative feelings are are for pussies and blah blah blah, and all that shit helped me turn into a better man. Yeah, fuck you, Grandpa. Okay, the only reason you're. Here's the thing. When grandfathers grandfathers and old people say that shit, you'll you'll look at them and say, "Hey, they they look maybe they're right. Maybe they're that, you know, the the child abuse and the constant uh disregard of my feelings was a healthy thing for me. It turned me into a hard rock and a good person." But no. Just look at them, okay? Their age, you know. If they're if they're if they're your grandfather or just an old person in general, they're they're old, all right. They've been through enough life, where even if they had some sort of, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what they've been through. They're at a point now where all that shit's kind of starting to fade away, and they're realizing, you know, they've they've figured shit out already. Um, but what you don't, you don't see is, is what's going on on the inside of them. They've got shit that they've could have, you know, they could have accomplished things in a different way and they could have been a different person. They were more than likely scared and hurt and upset during that whole time. And just because you, you struggled and fought through it and you, came out the other side alive doesn't mean that's what needs to be done to progress you know if these old grandfathers were raised in a comforting home with proper care and proper discipline they uh, they would probably grow up to be an even better person than they are right now. Because if you look at these old people as well uh, at their at their views and ideas, they still have shallow, old ways of thinking. Not all of them. 
but a lot of them. And it gets to a point where you can't even you can't even uh, you can't even change their thought process. Even the idea of mentioning a different method to to approach certain scenarios to them if it's different than what they grew up with they'll instantly dismiss dismiss it no matter what evidence you put forth towards them and if you know if they do dismiss it let them fucking dismiss it who cares just forget about them they're old they're gonna die their opinion doesn't matter anymore I know that's that's very harsh to say, but uh, they're the ones being the harsh ones in the first place. Okay, they're not willing to open them, open their mind, and uh, take in these new ideas. They're simply closing themselves, putting themselves in a confined space, and they're locking the door. And they're they'll let you in. They will gladly let you in but they're gonna do whatever they if they get you in they're gonna do what they can to not let you out and if you get out they're not coming with you and there's nothing you can do to convince them to come i shouldn't say nothing you know it can happen you can convince an old person with derogatory thoughts i'm not saying all people are like this all old people are like this you know there's a lot of old people that are are willing to to change and then try things new but there's a lot that don't and you know this you can't deny it you've seen it especially if you grow up in uh in a town or city or an area where it's it's the focus is mostly uh, industrialized or farming or some sort of hard labor work. If that's in your area, you're going to have a lot of people surrounding you that have um, those harsh, uh, those harsh, that harsh mentality of, of getting things done. It's all about being a man. You gotta be a man to succeed. You gotta put some balls on your shoulders. And step up. And that shit's good, you know. Yeah, that's, it's good to be confident. But there's, uh, you know. What do I know? We all grow up differently. We all have different experiences, and through those experiences, we choose how we look at life. And uh, you know, every everyone has a little a little difference in opinion. Um, but it's much easier when you ha- when when you communicate with p- people in your gen in your own generation, and you'll notice if you talk to people in your own generation, a lot of your views and ideas are the same, or similar. But if you talk to, you know, even if you talk to someone who's like just outside your generation, you know, they. Um, You'll notice the difference in thought. You really will. Not always, but you, you know. I've noticed it. I've been noticing that. There's just, you know, even if they're just slightly out of your generation, you would think, ah, oh, they, they would have this, this similar ideas as me. Which they generally do, but then there's a few that they're still, uh, they're still stuck, stuck against because they're they're a bit older or they're a bit younger or whatever. And so what I think what I really think is whatever new ideas are put forth um we should really consider them. 
like truly consider them because think about how many throughout the centuries how many ideas were put forth on the table that people immediately dismissed because it was different from what they're used to this happens every fucking decade a new idea gets put in place everyone dismisses it except for the few open-minded people and then society progresses and eventually that thing that everyone dismissed becomes the norm it happens way too often and one of the big ones right now especially where I'm living is um, this whole climate change debate I'm in a rural part of this country. Farming, oil field, you know, shit like that. That's the town I live in. Small town. Lots of old people who have old, old, uh, older, you know, they have their ways of thinking. They're stuck in the past. And then, you know, there's a lot of, like, just middle-aged people who still are stuck in the past. They don't want to progress in any sort of green energy in any way. I mean, you'll talk to them and they'll say, yeah, it's a good idea, but, but blah, 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 we need oil, blah, blah, blah. Fuck, fuck solar panels, fuck windmills, all this shit's just fucking causing us more taxes or whatever, I don't know. And uh, a lot of climate change deniers, like, and again, I'm not saying I believe it's true that humans are causing the climate to change, but I'm not dismissing it either. I mean, there's been evidence put forth that, yes, the climate is uh, increasing in temperature. And it has been for a while. But what we've noticed is that over the past few years, it's been rapidly increasing more than it has ever done before. Like astronomical, astronomically... Um, <laughs> it's just it's a crazy it's a it's a it's gotten to a point where it doesn't seem like it's a natu natural trend anymore like obviously something has happened um that has caused such a major spike in the temperature increase and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere other than up. Well, this evidence gets put forth of stuff that's happening to our planet, but yet there's people, a lot of people from where, I, from where I'm from will say it's all bullshit, um, and they'll just deny it. They, where I'm from, the majority of people believe that uh, humans have nothing to do with climate change and that we need to stick to the old ways of living we need to continue using petroleum uh, and oil in general for everything and I hate it I hate listening to those people, but I'm surrounded by them constantly. No matter where I go, I have, I have to, I have to, I have to listen to these stupid opinions. And I shouldn't say they're stupid; they're opinions. I have to listen to these opinions, and usually I don't even bother uh, contributing by putting in. M you know my own my own two cents for a few reasons one I'm only 24 and usually the people I'm talking to 
are much older than me and much more confident and wise in in the sense of you know having a conversation they know how to they know how to overpower you in a conversation which i don't and two um i don't i'm not very um i'm not learned on the subject as much as i should be or could be so i don't like to talk about um, particular opinions when it comes to a debate with other, with other people because it's going to get to a point where I don't I don't even know enough to to counter counter their arguments. Uh. So if I did, then I would definitely pursue it. Uh, and then and then also the third reason why is because. It's usually a group of people I'm working with in the oil field. And they're all they all have the same idea. So no matter what I try to say, they're all going to team up on me. And then I'm going to be known as the imbecile who doesn't know what he's talking about. And, uh, yeah. And now, yes, I'm working in the oil field. But n I don't want to be in there at all. And you're thinking, uh, I know exactly what you're thinking. You're like, well, just get out. Just get out. Uh, this kind of goes back, to, and this goes back to what we were talking about in the beginning. You know, it's not, it's not that easy. I mean, yes, it is easy. I could literally just go to my boss and say I quit. But if I do that, then I'm, you know, I still have to have some sort of income, unfortunately. And I say unfortunately because that's the society we live in. Everyone thinks money is like the key to life and we need money. And yeah, we do because we've built it that way we've designed it this way where we have to rely on money to continue living comfortably and you could say well if we didn't have this system we'd still be living in the forest so you know I can't I can't complain about money because you know without it we wouldn't have this comfortable living society but then I also think couldn't couldn't isn't there some other way to do this we're we're relying on on this old knowledge still the idea of government and, and legislation and all that, laws, and money, currency, like that all started a long time ago and we still base all our ideas off the old, of shit that was created fucking in the 1800s or even earlier. So why don't we, you know, take the time to just grab certain sections of the government and, and, and whatever and reevaluate and come up with new ways of doing things. And let let and you could even let the let society contribute. Use the internet to have a discussion, have a conversation of what can be done. You know? put forth ideas that people can vote on but also allow them to um, contribute by uh, letting 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 people expand on those ideas or even put to the table new ideas that can compete and then we'll you know we'll just get to we'll debate and 
we can figure we can figure it out and again what i'm saying is probably ridiculous and you're probably watching this saying that's not going to work and it never will and blah 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 and blue 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 but you know what like i said i don't know what i'm talking about i'm young and these are just ideas that are popping into my head because and i think it's just bound to happen probably everybody's have has had these ideas because why wouldn't you if we're living in a society that's like this and and these things happen of course i'm going to have these ideas of course i'm going to want things to change and be different that probably happens with every generation but nothing is ever really done people just accept and follow the rules which which is uh which is what they want and there's a lot that we don't even know what's going on and you know and by that i mean I really don't know what I mean by that, but what I'm trying to get at is there's, you know that there's um, either organizations or some sort of, or societies, there's, there's, there's influences, there's things that influence the government to such an extent that uh, it's almost like they're, they're controlling the government in their favor. You know, we know that's happening. It's all about, and it's always all about the money. If if you're not going to make the money, they just won't do it. And that's why we're not seeing uh, changes in, in the green energy. You know, what we are seeing, though, is fucking gas prices rising and more taxes put, 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 put in place. Um more and more people are finding it hard harder and harder to make a living um even basic income you know basic in income on uh whatever whatever standard whether it was welfare or or uh you know just minimum wage like you should be able to at least live off of minimum wage you should be able to at least have an apartment and be able to buy groceries and clothes or whatever but you definitely can't things everything's so inflated right now and the taxes the taxes really really kill people it's crazy to think that uh you know the government takes so much money from you and if you don't contribute they don't like that the weird thing is like you you could you know you could go to jail by not giving the government money i don't even know why i'm talking about this this is all boring okay what is this podcast i'm rambling about shit i don't even know what i'm talking about and i'm gonna i'm gonna stop i'm gonna move on i'm gonna move on to what's on the card because i've been talking about random balagna because these i hate the thoughts i have every day i wish I wish we were more developed as a as a human race. You know, some people some people long to be born in like the fifties or, or or whenever. Like people fantasize and say, "Oh, it was the simpler times. I want to go back to the simpler times." Like I was mentioning earlier. But what I want, I want. I wish I was born in like the 
distant, distant, distant future. Like when we really got a, a nice handle on uh, how to how to create a a a, a well off and happy society. Because you really think about it, like the majority of people are miserable for for uh, for similar reasons and it's it, it sucks and again I don't I don't know what I'm talking about I really don't I'm just saying uh, what comes to my mind from what I know from what little I know. I'm not saying I'm right in any way. And probably, you know, a few years from now, I'm going to disagree with what, everything I said. Who knows? But right now, this is how I feel. And it's not like I'm the only one. We see it. Uh, and we have seen it. When When the whole idea of creating governments was being established there was other ideas you know that were different than just democracy or fascism or dictatorship there was i don't remember who it was but someone wanted to create a utopian society and it failed horribly but we need more why can't we have more people that are trying that? Like, why, why have we, why do we think we've got government figured out? We just stopped when, when we got to capitalism and democracy. Just like, okay, we, we got it. Let the, let the low lives do all the hard work and make them pay a bunch of taxes while we, um, bask in uh, in the wealth that we've collected from their suffering and then you you bring that idea up to these wealthy people and they'll say well you have just as much of an opportunity to be where I'm at as I do to you or something like that you know they'll say something like that and yeah everybody can get to the top sure we all have equal opportunity that way but just because you have equal opportunity doesn't mean you're necessarily going to get there you know um and then there's different uh there's different ideas of equality like you look at communism that is a form of equality and if if uh it may be confusing to think about it first, but, you know, everyone gets paid the same, everyone contributes the same, um, and by that sense, everyone's equal. A doctor does not get any more compensation than a garbage man. And to be honest, I'm not saying communism is the way to go. But what I am saying is that when you go to countries that have communism put in place, such as Cuba, or I can't think of any other example. I think China's communist, but China's a whole different story. Anyway, like Cuba, they, although they don't have much, what they do have is happiness. The people there are, are wonderful. They're happy, and they're, it's like they're satisfied because they don't have they don't have the stress of of uh, you know being in debt, having to worry about paying the government or or you know there's so many stressors involved in the capitalistic democracy we live in. With that being... I'm still talking about government. God damn it. I said I was going to stop, Olive. I said I was going to stop. Why am I talking about this? This is not me. I don't talk about this stuff ever. 
This is what just is what this is what's coming to my mind right now. I don't know why, but it is. I wanted to talk about other stuff. Come here. Come on. Come up here, Olive. Come on. Come on. Come on, Olive. Here. Get up. Come on. Come on, Olive. Oh. That took way too long. Um so let's move on. Let's seriously move on. This podcast is supposed to be slightly comedic. You know, that's what my content was and always has been. And why am I not doing it that way? Well, because I'm uh, in a shitty mind space right now. That's why. So what you're getting is... um, the dubious thoughts that come to my brain. I'm a, and I, you know, it's what it's it happens. It's what's happening. I'll look back to these episodes and I'll say, that was when I was depressed. You can tell by just watching it. And if you and then you know the future episodes you'll see. I'll find a better groove. I'll be in a better headspace. And I'll be able to create what I always envisioned. Which I'm not saying I'm not doing that right now. You know what I'm saying. I'm just in a bad a bad spot. Bad spot. I'm in a bad spot. But I'm working through it. And I also I also wanted to say this before we move on. When we were talking about how it's scary to move forward and that you some people feel more comfortable staying where they are and that's you know that's not a good way to think obviously but i don't want you to think i'm doing that although i'm in a bad spot and i don't want to be in the oil field i am currently doing things to move away from it like I said, you can't just quit and move on. You got it's a it's a process of different things put into place. So, one of the things I have is this podcast. And this is probably it's my main focus because since I was 12 and even younger, all I wanted to do was be a YouTuber. As weird as that sounds, I don't care if you're not part of the YouTube community, you don't understand. But that's that that's that's the dream of mine. As weird and it, you know, you don't you don't have to understand it. Everyone has their own dreams, passion of what they want to do. And yeah. That's what I want. There's nothing I want more than to have a successful YouTube channel and so that's my main focus and I've been keeping up with this and I realize that no matter what goes on no matter how bad my life is getting I still have this podcast um you know if I'm working away I can still make the podcast I can still upload it it won't be as high quality and there won't be the backdrop and everything, and I won't have the mic, but at least I can still progress and do it. And then also, I'm in, in uh, I'm talking to, communicating with a school to figure out what course, a course to take, which I, I really don't want to, but, you know, that's something, uh, I just gotta do something, you know, I gotta, I gotta, whatever it takes to get out of the oil field. And, you know, I'll do this course and it can get me out of the oil field for however long, you know, but it's not something I'm gonna stick to. Or maybe I will, I don't know, you know. But my, my main goal, other than having a success on YouTube, is getting out of this fucking job. It's the worst. You 
No, and it's not because it's like hard work. It can be, most definitely. It just fucks with me mentally. I can't handle just having to drop everything and go go to work. It stresses me out like crazy. And again, there's people in my life who if I said this to, they'll say something like, oh, well, we all got to do it. You know, we all got to do these things in life. Uh, you just got to suck it up, blah, 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 blah. So, I need to get out of this field of work. And it's so weird seeing people that love it. There's, like, honestly, the majority of people in the oil field fucking love it. Like, they're satisfied with it, and I don't get it. Like I said, do because they grew up with it and they like the money. Yeah, you can make money. But I don't care about money. Like, yeah, I want I want just enough to be comfortable. I, and why is that so bad? Why do we have to long for being rich? Like, I really don't care about that at all. And the same person who said that other stuff to me thinks in this capitalistic, you know, endeavor. This person wants me to understand that money is the most important and you gotta get to the top. And no, I don't want that. I mean, yeah. Um, I plan on having a lot of money through the YouTube career that I long for someday. But that's not why I'm doing it. That is definitely not why I'm doing it. People will say they don't care about money, but they really do. But honestly, I fucking hate money. I hate what it has done to me and what it has done to many other people money does not equal happiness and you know I understand life is not about just searching for complete and utter happiness constantly because you do need the negative to balance with the happiness so you understand when and why you are happy. Without the negativity, you really wouldn't be happy. You'd probably just be neutral. But what's wrong with that? Why can't that be something to strive for? And people say, well, because you know what happiness is. You gotta. You, it's what we live for. Blah 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 blah. I don't know. Again, I don't know. This is just a twenty-four-year-old. I'm still. I'm gonna call myself a child because I am. I'm not. Yeah, I'm an adult, but I'm not. I'm. You know, technically an adult, but I'm not. I'm not, though. I'm not an adult. I'm not there. You can't just expect to exit high school and know what to do because it takes it takes time. It takes time and knowledge to figure things out and experience. Lots of experience and in whatever and what I will say is uh, as much as I hate the oil field it has definitely trained me in uh, in it's it's training me to progress in my mental exercises 
So whatever comes in the future, I should be able to handle things a bit more easier with less nervousness. So that is a positive that comes from this. But the negative outweighs the positive. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta kick it to the curb. I've done my time. This is, and I have actually twice already um, got into a breaking point and said, fuck this, and I quit the oil field. And then I came back, and then I quit again, and now I'm back for the third time. So, and what I realized during those two times quitting is that it's, you know, it's hard to just drop it and find something new, especially when you don't have really any skills to show to find a new job and then you realize like fuck like money is necessary to live even at the basic level so what do you do you come back to what you what you know which is the oil field and then that's how people get stuck in a job for their whole life doing what they don't want to do because they're too comfortable they become too comfortable and uh, reliant and it gets to a point where they're too old and they don't want to take risks anymore I'm still young and risk taking is uh, still up front in my mind. I feel like the older you get, the less risks you want to take because, uh, you know, there's so many factors at play. Uh, I said I was going to move on, and I still haven't moved on yet. So, let's move on right now. No more... No more talking about this. God, that was I was I can't believe how long I rambled on and on about fucking uh, society and mental. Okay, we're moving on. We're moving on. Just move on, Jesus. So, I mentioned at the top of the podcast I've been walking more. I have been, and I walked this morning with Oval Oliver. Uh, and a few th- a few little things happened that I would like to mention. But first, I would like to say a thank you to our sponsors. Uh, the first one being me undies. Just kidding. I don't have any sponsors. I just want to, just want to practice for when it does happen. I did actually get me undies. I subscribed using the the promo code Valleycast, and I got ten percent off me undies. And I got some octopus. They got octopuses on them. I'm not wearing them yet. I felt I felt them with my hands, and they are soft. But I didn't want to put them on yet until I uh, until I shower. I want to shower and have fresh balls, and then slide on those silky smooth and soft undies, and see see how they are. I've bought these other ones in the past before me undies even existed, and they were called Saks S A X X. And similar idea to me undies. Uh, I don't know if they use the micro multiple whatever fabric. They use something soft though, and it and it has a little like pouch that cups your balls and dick. And it was it was nice. It was you know it was soft, but the pouch didn't really feel that great. And the elastic band started to like deteriorate real quick um, and it kind of like deformed itself maybe I had too small of a size of underwear but it didn't uh, it's like all bent at a shape not uniform anymore and then so now when I put them on it, after a while the waistband actually hurts to wear it because it's so misshapen I've never seen underwear do that. Like I have cheap fruit of the loom underwear. I have more fruit of the loom than than Saks or MeUndies 
and yet they're still in perfect condition. And these sax ones, fucking, I don't know, they just are not worth it. They're expensive too, but they're not worth it. So I'll, 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 you know, I'll come back and and see what I think about MeUndies. But from what I've heard, I've only heard good things from MeUndies, but I've only heard it from from the people who were sponsored by MeUndies. So they're not gonna say ah, bad things about it. But um, the people I listen to usually don't promote um, a product unless they actually uh, enjoy or like the product themselves and you know that's the way it should be it wasn't like that in TV TV you advertise whatever the fuck doesn't matter what it is just so you get paid but we're we're progressing into a, a better society. You know, it's slowly happening. Slowly becoming what we want. And now people are um, using sponsors that they actually trust and believe in. Because why would you promote something that sucks? It's own it's bad publicity for yourself and it's bad publicity for the product itself. because um, people will look at you and say, Obviously you guys are just in it for the money if you're promoting this piece of garbage and because of that I'm not gonna watch you anymore. You know that could happen now. It's not it's not like T V anymore. You know, television you only had a certain amount of channels and you only had a certain amount of shows to watch. So if they did something you didn't agree with and you said, hey, I'm not going to watch you anymore, well, shit. You're probably still going to watch th that network and you'll probably end up watching that show again no matter what you said already because you don't have that much of an option. But now with... YouTube and Netflix and Amazon Prime and Crackle and uh, and uh, what's the other popular one? I can't think of it, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, and YouTube especially, like how many people are are a success on YouTube right now? Like, there's hundreds of thousands. And, and on top of that, there's just millions and millions of users who have channels. And maybe they're not big, but they, you know, there's so much content that you don't have to stick to whatever's given to you. You can find whatever the fuck suits you right down to the specific whatever it is. Like, if you're a gardener, if you're, like, a gardener who gardens, like, only weird fruit, like dragon fruit or something, I'm sure you could find a YouTube channel that's dedicated to those same interests. And you follow them, and you learn from them, and then maybe collaborate with them. It's so, it's so wonderful. You can literally find, you can find your people, whatever you're interested in, you find them online and then the community, the community builds from that and it's so wonderful. It doesn't matter what it is, you'll find people with your, with your interests and likes. And maybe there isn't, maybe your thing is so fucking obscure that, that there isn't really anybody promoting it. So what do you do? You hop on that bandwagon and you start creating the content that you want to see but you can't find. Because there's probably a bunch of other people who are trying to find what you're looking for. And they can't find it. But they'll continue to look and then they'll find you. 
and then promote you and your thing will get bigger and so on and so forth. Blah, blah, blue, blah. You know? You bling, bling, bloom, blah. Still not talking about what I wanted to talk about. So let's get into it. I was going for a walk today, this morning. It was a lovely walk. Um, it, it was hot outside, but there was a very strong breeze, which I enjoyed. I don't like going for walks when it's stupidly hot and there's no wind. That's the worst. Because there's nothing I hate more than, than being too hot. Because I get itchy. I get really itchy, especially in the head. Like, when I'm sweating and uncomfortably hot, like, I get uncomfortably itchy, too. I just got to keep scratching. Scratchy, scratch, scratch. Oh, that's bass. I was wondering what that was. Again, fucking neighbors blaring the music. This is becoming uh, a daily thing now. Uh, I'm not going to complain. I'll let someone else complain. Because you know someone's going to complain. Because it happens every day. And not only that, the fucker has a goddamn like a, a Mitsubishi Eclipse or something. And uh, it's got some sort of performance exhaust system on it. And probably a cold air intake and all that other shit. And it's fucking loud. It's loud just at an idol. But this young little, men, you know, you know when you were young, you had your nice car or whatever and you show off. This guy every day fucking has to rev it up to fucking 900 RPM before he takes off. Steps on the throttle about seven times. Before he goes to the grocery store. Every time. And then he comes back down our street. Parks. Fucking revs her up a few more times. And shuts her down. Goes inside, blares the music. Every day. Every day. Now, am I going to complain? No, I'm not. Uh, why? Well, um, there was a point in my life where I did the exact same thing. Without, with complete disregard to my neighbors, uh, and you know, looking back, I shouldn't have done it. It's annoying. Uh, people have children that are trying to sleep. Uh, people are trying to focus on whatever work they're doing, and it's it's difficult when you got all this noise. But you know, on the other hand. I don't really give a shit. Like, it's it's honestly just noise. What's the big deal, you know? It's not like it's, uh... It's not like it's affecting me... Uh... To a point where I literally can't get stuff done. Or it's disturbing me in a bad way. Like, it honestly doesn't even bother me. It's a little annoying, and I would like it to stop, but it's not It's not so aggressive that I want to do something about it. If it was that bad, yes, I would, I would be the first person over there. Actually, yeah, but I have a feeling it's someone at some point, because I'm not the only neighbor, you know. There's someone living below me. There's someone uh, on the other side of the house. And there's there's actually a funeral home across the street. And there's actually a funeral procession happening today. I don't know if it already happened or not. And so hearing this guy blast his bumping tunes while there's a funeral uh, ceremony, whatever the fuck is going on, that is going, that that's a little, you know, 
disrespectful. And yeah, he might not know that's going on, but still. Um, I know if I was in his position right now, I would consider my neighbors and keep my music turned down, which I do right now. There was actually a point in this house, I might have mentioned it, that I had my music a little too loud and my downstairs neighbor actually came up and knocked on my door and said, hey, I live downstairs. I was like, oh, all right, sorry, I didn't know. And I turned my music down and that was it. No more. I never seen him since. Don't even know the guy's name. Didn't even know he was living in there up until that point I had the music too loud and he complained. So, what was I trying to get at here? So yeah, if I was in his position, I would not be doing what he's doing. Because I would be thinking about my neighbors. And something tells me that he has the men he has a who gives a fuck mentality where it's his house it's his area he's going to do what he wants and, you know what am i going to do he's and he's young he's younger than me i'm pretty sure i don't even think he's out of high school yet He's not the only one living there. There's like a fucking... There's, there's a weird neighbor situation I got going on. There's probably... There's like an older guy and then there's like... Two young guys who are like... Only 20 years old and then there's... A, a girl and then a bunch of children. It's so... I don't, I don't even understand what's going on. Like there's so many... People over there. I don't... I don't even know. Like, it might, it, it's, like, I don't, it's, it's strange to me. Because, like, the, the, the real adult, the guy who's, like, 30-something years old, there's no way the, the eclipse-driving, music-bumping kid is his because it wouldn't work. Like, they're, they're too close in age. But yet they're living together, and I don't know. It's it's strange. Like every day, I see I see someone new. It's almost like I see someone new at this house. Like like there'll be a day I'll see someone mowing the lawn. No idea who it is. Never seen him before. And then the next day there'll be like a bunch of children outside playing on the trampoline. And then there's like a woman with some other dude on the step. So I don't know what the fuck's going on. You can have whatever theory you want. Uh, I don't care. They're not. They're not harming me. I, I talked to only one person over there. That was like the thirty-five-year-old dude who, who, you know. And I'm not gonna say his name, but he seemed cool. We talked for a bit. Uh, you could tell he's the kind of person who wants to be friendly with their neighbors. Um, I don't, I don't care about the whole neighborly friendship thing. I could care less. But I bet when I get older, I'll care more about it. I bet when I'm older, I'll care about a lot of different things. Like right now, and, well, really my whole life up until this point, still... I don't really, you know, I'm not the kind of person who looks forward to having a family or, or when I see like families hugging and, and saying all these cheesy lines to each other. And then there's other families that are like, oh, the, you guys have such a special relationship and I, and blah, 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 you know, all that bullshit. That stuff makes me cringe, and it grosses me out, and I don't want anything to do with it. I I hate, I hate it. Like, I hate it when people are like, ah, I don't know, it's just gross. But, um, 
I have a feeling when I get older, I'll, ha I'll change that viewpoint. You know, like I don't want, I do not want a family right now. Not even a little bit. And if I, you know, if I change, if I change that point of view when I'm older, then great. We're supposed to change. We're, you know, if you're the same fucking piece of shit you were at 20 years old. Wait. Uh oh. Whoopsie daisies. <laughs> this is the pro the longest fucking podcast I've done so long that my phone decided well fuck there's no way you're making a video this long i'm gonna pause the recording and that's what just happened where was i Duh. i don't care <laughs> still haven't talked about what i want to talk about so i'm gonna talk about it right fucking now um uh, i was walking okay beautiful day breeze blah 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 we talked about all that i was walking uh and i see an old rusty old pickup truck long box um whatever you call it the regular cab with no back seat just the just the bench seat across the across the cab you can sit three people in there and what did i see three fucking high school students in in this uh shitty old pickup truck and that's very common where i'm from again i'm in a rural area farmers bullshit so you see a lot of cowboys Ugh, that's another thing i don't like cowboys when i see someone wearing a cowboy hat and cowboy boots and wranglers and that plaid stupid shirt tucked into the wranglers ugh, it makes me want to puke i can't stand that shit and they've got a big dip in their lip. And then, oh. Hate it. But that's, that's what I saw in this pickup truck. Uh, I didn't judge. Well, I guess I did. If I'm saying that I hate. What is that saying? Okay, my fucking phone is like. And it's max capacity or some shit, and it keeps pausing. So let me let me run through this real quick. Um, you know what? I'll save it for next podcast. I talked enough. Um, oh my god! Fuck off, you cunt! SD card full. Okay, well my SD card's full for some fucking reason. So you're just gonna get the audio for the rest of this. Um I'm gonna end it right here. Thank you for watching the Dynamite Gizmo podcast. Uh I hope you enjoyed this long, monotonous episode. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Say pay. Goddamn mosquitoes. Um, there was little, like, bridges crossing over little bodies of water. Oliver, don't do that. And then I saw a frog or two in ecstasy. Makes me crumble, don't you see? Uh, if you're still listening, we're going to talk about the two topics I missed in today's episode. We're going to talk about them in the next episode. Okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed my long rant about bullshit. <laughs>